Materials in this presentation on concrete mix design were first published in the August 2014 issue of the Construction Specifier, a peer-reviewed magazine and the official publication of Construction Specifications Institute, or CSI. The following recommendations are limited to slab on grade for schools, office buildings, churches, big box stores, and similar constructions. To write a concrete specification, the specifier should understand the priority of the water cement ratio, the concept of total water content, and the importance of selecting appropriately sized and graded aggregate. The specifier should also be aware of these four common mistaken beliefs when writing a concrete specification. Strength is a central quality of concrete in many applications, but slump and strength alone are an incomplete mix design. Many specifiers believe that more, not less, cement makes better concrete, but that's not always true. Synthetic fiber mesh is not a substitute for welded wire reinforcement. P-stone does not make for high-quality concrete. The results of these mistaken beliefs are large random cracks, curling at joints, and exterior concrete that spalls and deteriorates prematurely. The objectives of the mixed designs recommended in this presentation are to reduce cracking and curling, provide adequate strength, increase the durability, and minimize pop-outs in exterior concrete, and maintain workability. Most specifiers are aware that air-entrained concrete is more durable and resistant to freeze-thaw cycles than concrete without air entrainment. But some are not aware that concrete designed with a low water cement ratio and entrained air will be substantially more durable. Control of contraction cracking and curling is critical to the success of polished concrete floors, thin-set terrazzo, and hard tile floor coverings. The appearance of the polished concrete floor in this photo, designed with fiber mesh but without welded wire reinforcement, has been permanently ruined by drying shrinkage cracking. The following requirements will reduce curling and drying shrinkage cracking and improve durability. Low water cement ratio designs. Larger maximum coarse aggregate graded coarse aggregates, jointing requirements with smaller area between joints, welded wire reinforcement, better preparation of subgrades. Contraction cracks in concrete floors with bonded floor coverings will telegraph through surface coverings. These defects can never be satisfactorily repaired. A correctly proportioned mix design with a low water cement ratio, properly sized and graded aggregate, welded wire reinforcement, and minimally spaced contraction jointing would have significantly reduced the cracks in the terrazzo in this photo, but this concrete had none of those. Be aware that long-term shrink cracking occurs because of contraction combined with restraint. When shrinking concrete is snagged on a pipe or interior wall, resistance builds up, exceeding the tensile strength of the concrete, and a crack develops. An uneven subgrade produces significant drag on the concrete and will contribute to long-term shrink cracking. Curling occurs at contraction joints and edges of concrete during drying stages when there is a difference of evaporation rates between the top and the bottom of the concrete. If the top dries faster than the bottom, the differential contraction causes the concrete to lift or curl toward the surface. Curling requires expensive hand grinding or floor stoning before bonded floor coverings can be placed Fortunately, curling can be reduced with the same techniques that work to reduce drying shrinkage. To conclude the introduction to concrete mix designs, the most important factors contributing to the quality of concrete are the amount of water used in relation to the quantity of cement 
and the total water content of a batch of concrete. Welded wire reinforcement, aptly sized and graded aggregates, and timely jointing reduce the amount of curling and contraction, but water cement ratio is still the most important factor for controlling shrinkage, curling, and improving durability. Excess water over and above what is needed to hydrate cement is added to concrete to facilitate placement, consolidation, and finishing. But excess water must evaporate before concrete can harden. As water evaporates, the concrete contracts about 1 16th of an inch in 10 feet, causing drying shrinkage cracks. More excess water causes more contraction. Begin by specifying a low water cement ratio. According to the Portland Cement Association, the quality of hardened concrete is determined by the amount of water used in relation to the amount of cement. The most direct method to reduce total water content is to prescribe low water cement ratio and the minimum cement paste needed to facilitate workability. Workability is the ease or difficulty of placement, consolidation, and finishing. This illustration shows that total water content is reduced when graded coarse aggregates are used. The void space in freshly mixed concrete is the space not filled with aggregate and is otherwise filled with cement paste. Graded aggregates reduce the voids around the aggregate, minimizing the cement paste needed to fill the void. Of course, a certain amount of excess paste is needed to get a workable mixture. Using just enough paste to fill the voids around a tightly packed aggregate would make the mixture unworkable. Since the most important qualities of concrete depend on the total water content, choose a low water cement ratio of 0.45 or lower to start. The water cement ratio is simply the weight of water divided by the weight of cement in a batch of concrete. In the example on the screen, we're using a six sack concrete or 560 pounds of cement and 256 pounds of water. The result is a water cement ratio of 0.45. Strength is a reciprocal of the water cement ratio. Lower water cement ratios produce higher strength concrete. As the graph indicates, a 0.45 water cement ratio produces concrete strength of 4,500 pounds or greater. The lower the water content, the higher the strength of concrete. Many structural engineers would not think to recommend 4,500 pound concrete for foot traffic or other light loads, but in reality, the stronger concrete has other qualities important to bonded floor coverings, the appearance of exposed concrete, and the durability of exterior concrete. To illustrate the principle of total water content, two mix designs are shown in this illustration. Both mixes are 0.45 water cement ratios, but the top one uses six sack cement and the bottom uses five and a half sack. There is 22 pounds more water in the six sack concrete. Appearances of low water cement ratio concrete at the point of discharge are shown in this photo. The concrete is stiff and tends to pile up at the end of the chute and doesn't really flow anywhere without human or mechanical power. Concrete in this photo is the same low water cement ratio as the previous photo, but the contractor has added a plasticizer. Contraction joints in slabs on grade are aesthetic improvements. Without them, concrete would random crack. The concrete floor in this photo will be allowed to random crack. While jointing is an aesthetic method of putting drying shrink cracks where the designer prefers them, the curling that results is a problem for the installation of many types of floor covering. Allowing concrete to random crack under carpet, VCT, linoleum, and wood gym floors would improve the installation of these floor coverings by avoiding curling altogether. Any random crack design should incorporate welded wire reinforcement to keep the cracks held tightly together, especially in long narrow ribbons of concrete. 
According to Portland Cement Association, the drying shrinkage of steel reinforced concrete is less than that for plain concrete. The difference depends on the amount of reinforcement. Further, steel reinforcement restricts but does not prevent drying shrinkage, and it has no effect on the strength of concrete. There are two types of shrink cracking shown in these photos. Drying shrinkage cracking that occurs as concrete hardens and the excess water evaporates, and plastic shrink cracking that occurs while it is in a bleed stage. There has been an effort to convince architects and engineers that fiber mesh will control long term shrink cracks as effectively as welded wire reinforcement. However, scientific studies and field experience do not bear this out. According to the Portland Cement Association, synthetic fiber mesh has no appreciable effect on long-term shrink cracking. Synthetic fiber mesh is recommended for control of plastic shrink cracking, but it is ineffective at reducing long-term shrink cracking. Steel reinforcement holds contraction cracks tightly together, making some cracks microscopic instead of a visible gap. The practical purpose of adding welded wire reinforcement to slab-on grade concrete is to keep drying shrinkage cracks from separating, which it does quite efficiently. According to the Portland Cement Association, synthetic fibers do not have the same effect. Fibers are too dispersed in concrete to get the same area of reinforcement compared to using a network of reinforcing bars or welded wire reinforcement. The total cement paste can be reduced by prescribing graded and larger maximum size coarse aggregates. Larger coarse aggregates have less surface area to be coated by cement paste, and graded aggregates have less void space to be filled with paste, reducing the total water requirement. Also, larger coarse aggregates physically restrain the movement of concrete while the material is going from the plastic to the hardened state. The Portland Cement Association states, larger aggregates restrain the shrinkage of cement paste, reducing drying shrinkage cracks. To reduce long-term shrink cracking, increase strength and improve exterior durability with aggregates, designers should specify a graded aggregate with the largest maximum coarse aggregate consistent with other requirements for aggregate size. Larger maximum size coarse aggregates increase strength by minimizing the paste content required to coat the surface of the aggregate, and graded aggregates reduce the water content further by minimizing the void content between aggregates. The cement paste requirement is proportional to the void content of the combined aggregates. ASTM tests of 600 cylinders for concrete compressive strength with varying aggregate sizes recorded the following. Results reveal the strength ratio was higher for the larger nominal maximum aggregate size concrete at each testing stage. Hence, as nominal maximum aggregate size decreased, the strength ratio decreased. Portland Cement Association and ASTM tests showed there is no real difference in strength in concrete with average grading and concrete with well-graded or gap-graded aggregates. Aggregates for exterior concrete should comply with ASTM C33 that limits deleterious material to less than 1%. Deleterious material is defined as soft stone and chert that, due to their light weight, float to the top of the concrete during placement and finishing operations, soaking up water in thaw cycles and exploding in freezing cycles, causing pop-outs. In conclusion, designing concrete for slabs on ground for hospitals, office buildings, schools, and similar buildings must take into consideration the floor covering. Concrete specifications for exposed and bonded floor coverings must select requirements that minimize contraction cracking and curling, and select aggregates that do the same. Specifiers of exposed concrete and concrete for bonded floor coverings must pursue concrete with the minimum contraction cracking and curling. Many floor coverings would benefit from approaches that allow concrete to random crack. <laughs>